Okay, we're going to have a go this time at doing something with some dimensions on. So if you need to, you can press File and New Design, and it will come up with a new tab. Um, we don't need to save the previous drawing. We'll save this one in a minute. So we're going to do the same kind of thing. We're going to choose a rectangle. We're going to choose the plane, or the face that we want to draw it on. And this time, I'm not going to click the end of my rectangle. Now what I can do is I can start to put in the dimensions that I need to get an accurate representation of my camera. You should already have the sizes of your camera from your orthographic drawing or your isometric drawing. I've not got a camera in front of me, so I'm just going to type in some, some numbers. So you can see that one of the boxes is blue. And as I move my rectangle, it changes the dimensions. If I type, it changes and it automatically updates the shape. If I want to get to the other box, I press the tab key. And then I can toggle between the two tabs. Type in your measurements and you press enter. As you can see now I've got my, my shape and I can press stop sketch to make it 3D. Going to do the same thing as before. I press extrude, click it and you can either drag it out, or we want to be a little bit more accurate this time, so we can put in our dimensions, like so. Same kind of thing with the lens and the other parts. I'm going to select a circle. This time I'm going to have a look at the lens, and I'm going to do it on the front here. Now, if you want the lens to be in the center of a face, for instance, if I go to this side here, watch out for a triangle. There's a triangle that pops up. I'm not clicking anything, I'm just moving my cursor and that dotted line or that dashed line represents the center of that face. So that's a nice kind of easy way of making sure it's going to be correct. Let's say this is going to be 65 millimeters. You don't have to type in millimeters. It's already in millimeters. It will do it for you. I've got that now 65. However, what I don't want what I don't know yet is the distance from this edge. So we need to try and get that and we need to change it possibly. And to do that, if you go to sketch, down near the bottom there's one that says sketch dimension. If you click that, we can now give certain distances. So if I click the distance from this edge to the center and click, and click again, I can now edit that size. So I might want that 55 millimeters. Hit return and it'll update it. Okay. If you've done it and you think, oh, I've done it wrong, you just double click it and you can type it in again and it will update it. Okay. If you wanted to change the distance from the top to the center, again, you can do that. Okay. So you can get things as accurate as you want to. Obviously, that's not going to work. So I'll double click that again and I'll make it, I don't know, 48 for instance. Okay. When you're done, same as before, you hit stop sketch, you go to extrude, click your piece, and then you can pull it out or type in the distance according to your drawings, like so. Okay. So it's very simple to do all the dimensions and things for it. So the same can be with the top, for instance. Select the top, um, do a rectangle of whatever sizes you want, hitting the tab key to toggle between the two dimensions. When you've got it like so, again, you can go to sketch dimension and you can choose the distances between all of your different parts. Okay, so just to show you that that press pull works in the same kind of way does the same sort of thing as you can see there. Okay, have a go at that. And then this time what we're going to do though is we're going to save it. So I'm going to save this as camera one. Hit save. And now you can see the name of it's changed here and it's now called camera one. Okay, give it a go.